Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for professional actuarial exams. Uh, today is time for exam FM on financial mathematics practice problem. I'm giving you here some websites with information about me and uh, my advice on how to pass actuarial exams and uh, seminars and uh, manual seminar that I run and manuals that I wrote. I use this redirect service smarturl.it. So if you go to smarturl.it forward slash pass, you'll get my advice on how to pass actuarial exams. If you go to uh, smarturl.it forward slash btdt dash online, you will see the online seminar that I teach. Um, for exams, PFM, MLC, and MFE, so it's seminars, not one seminar. Um, and uh, I call this uh, channel from here to BTDT because I stress that you should be able to get to the point that when you take the exam, you look at every question on the exam, you should be able to say, oh, been there, done that. You have done so many practice problems and difficult ones so that you immediately know what to do because, let's face it, actuarial exams are structured this way that they're not only hard, but you simply do not have time to think on the exam. You have to do the thinking before the exam. You have to know what to do when you look at the problem on the exam and do it immediately because you have on exam FM about five minutes per problem. So if you don't know what to do during the first three minutes, you should go to the next problem and eventually later on just come back and guess on this one. Three minutes, there should be something in your mind, you should have a complete structure, you should be almost done after three minutes. If you were not able to do anything in three minutes, time to go on. But this will not happen if you prepare properly. If you study really difficult problems, challenge yourself, always face any difficulties and overcome them and memorize and study hard problems. So let's look at today's exercise. This is a problem from sample, um, sample exercises for exam FM. Uh, recently published uh, additional problems include more uh, problems on swaps, and this is a problem about swaps. You are given the following prices for a zero coupon bond that matures for one, the maturity value of it is one dollar if it's in US dollars, but just the value of one on the maturity date. And you have five different maturities, one, two, three, four, and five years. And the price is the current present value of that one dollar paid one year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, and five years from now. Josh and Philip enter into a four-year swap with a notional amount of 200000 The swap has annual settlement periods. Under the swap, Josh will pay Philip the fixed swap rate at the end of each year, while Philip will pay Josh the variable rate, where the variable rate is the, is the one-year spot rate at the beginning of each year. Determine the net swap payment at the end of the first year. So take a close look at the times of payments and how the interest rates are determined. The payments are made at the end of each year and the variable rate payment is the one year rate determined at the beginning of the year for the payment at the end of the year. Right? This is called settlement in arrears. You look back for the interest rate that tells you how much to pay on, on the date when you make the payment. You could also be looking forward. You could be looking at the current one-year rate, one year forward. That's a different story than this. This is very important to notice this because there's a very simple formula for the fixed rate of the swap if a swap is settled in arrears and you are expected to have that formula memorized. And here we use this formula. So importantly, as I said, we note that the 
variable rate is settled in the rears and that means we can use the formula for the swap rate, the fixed rate of the swap. And it's determined as 1 minus P4 over P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4. And those P's are the prices of a zero of zero coupon bonds maturing at those times with a value of 1. And the times that we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, are the times of the payments of this swap. They're not just picked because it's year one, year two, year, no, and they correspond to the times of the payments. Okay? So the top is 1 minus point, uh, 0.825, the bottom is 0 0.965 plus 0 0.92 plus 0 0.875 plus 0.825. These are the numbers given in the problem. We just plug them in and we get um, the uh, fixed rate. So Josh owes the fixed rate payment of that interest rate times 200,000. That's 9762.90. And Philip owes the variable rate payment of, well, we need to figure out what the first year uh, one year spot rate is, and that would be also the forward rate uh, for the first year. The first year, one year forward rate is the same as one year spot rate. Um, so that's one over the price of a zero coupon bond maturing at time one, uh, minus one. That's really one over V, if you want to think about it this way, which is one plus I minus one, so it's the interest rate. It corresponds to that. Um, and that payment is 725389. So you see that Josh owes a bigger amount than Philip. And what happens in practice is that those two are subtracted against each other, and whoever ends up owing money pays that amount. So Josh uh, pays the net of the two, which is uh, 2509 and one cent, which is answer A. Please remember this is copyrighted material, and please remember also that old um, exam problems or practice problems from society of actuaries or casualty actual society are their property. I'm using them with permission, but they belong to the societies. This is, of course, society of actuaries practice problem. Good luck in your studies, and good luck on the exam.